My name is Amy Smith, and I'm a part-time reference librarian at Santa Monica College, and I am presenting a workshop today on how to do literature research. So a little housekeeping before I um, get started with the meat and potatoes of this presentation. Obviously, this uh, workshop is being presented uh, from my home. And so it may inadvertently include some household noises, including the doorbell or meowing cats or sirens from outside my window. So uh, just, we'll just move on with those household noises. Do me a favor and uh, mute your microphones. Use the chat to ask questions. And I will leave time uh, throughout the presentation for questions. Uh, and at the end, uh, we can have time for questions and answers. So I'm going to begin at the very beginning. And that is, what is the mission of the Santa Monica College Library? And the mission of the Santa Monica College Library is to support the teaching that goes on in the college. So in presenting this workshop on literature, resources. I, I thought that it would be helpful to begin with the mission of the English and Literature Department of Santa Monica College. And that is literature survey courses in American, English, World, Asian, African American, and ethnic literature reveal major themes and motifs in cultures both ancient and modern so that students can appreciate the diversity and rich interrelatedness of the human family. So that's at the core of what the Department of English and Literature does at Santa Monica College. It is also at the core of what the library does, and that is to support the, the courses being taught. So our collection, we collect and make available materials that will help students be successful in those courses. Now, you can do your research at the public library, but the mission of the public library is to support the uh, general public. Uh, and you can find uh, literature resources that will help you at the public library. But the difference between the public library and the Santa Monica College Library is that the college library material are specifically to support the teaching at Santa Monica College. And so we provide the specific materials that you will need to be successful. So I'd like to begin also by um, just briefly describing the types of sources that you're going to be using in your literature research. Well, information can be grouped into three basic categories, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary sources are first-hand accounts or the original sources of information. That can include the original literary works, like novels, plays, poems, and artworks produced by the artists and writers. It can also include diaries, memoirs, speeches. Um, it can include original documents and historical newspaper articles of the time. And nowadays, we're also including tweets. Tweets are considered uh, primary sources. Secondary sources offer an analysis or a review of the primary event source. So for example, literary criticism of the novel, um, reviews in scholarly journals, magazines, and newspapers of the works of fiction or nonfiction, biographies, nonfiction books, and retweets. Those are secondary sources. And then tertiary sources are compilations or collections of primary and secondary sources. And this can include encyclopedias, dictionaries, indexes, textbooks, uh, databases, and catalogs. So your research will likely begin with tertiary sources 
then secondary, and when needed to primary sources. So today I'm going to show you some searches and I'm going to begin with the tertiary sources of databases and catalogs. So how to find resources. We're going to begin at the Santa Monica, Lib uh, Santa Monica College Library website. And I will show you how to find the website uh, and how, and then uh, I'm gonna show you features of the library's website that are will be very helpful to you, not only in uh, literary uh, sources, but in, in all other types and across disciplines. I'll show you briefly research guides, and then I'm going to go more in depth to the databases that will be helpful to you. I'll show you all the databases, and then I'll show you uh, the subject specific databases for literature. So we do have literature specific resources uh, that I'm going to go over. Now we have a number of them right now. I'm just going to discuss four of them, uh, but we have many more. But the most important ones that I'd like to talk about today are the, our databases that include literary sources. You can find up-to-date biographical information, overviews, full text, literary criticism, and reviews of more than 130,000 writers in all disciplines from all time periods from around the world. It's a treasure trove database. It's got just tons of information on uh, literature. Uh, for drama, we have the database Drama Online. And this includes full text of plays from across history uh, of the theater uh, from the beginning to the present day. It includes non-English language works in translation, scholarly and critical editions, first night program text, and critical analysis and contextual information. Critical interpretations, theater, history, surveys, and major reference works on authors, movements, practitioners, periods, and genres are included alongside performances and practitioner texts, acting and backstage guides. So this is a terrific source if you're doing your research on drama. We have Glee editions, which is a full text editions of selected classic drama, novels, short stories, and informational texts annotated uh, for seven literary elements, and it contains background information, glossary index, and graphics. And then another wonderful source for you to learn about is McGill on Literature. This is a critical analysis and plot summaries of the most studied works in the history of literature. It includes information on over 1,500 notable authors covers long and short fiction writers, poets, dramatists, and philosophers. And uh, the, the plot summaries are, uh, are a great resource. We also have general literature resources that'll be helpful to you. And I, just a few of them include JSTOR, which has back issues of over 300 scholarly journals and a wide variety of disciplines. Now, this as the key word here is back issues. Because of a publication embargo, JSTOR uh, cannot publish articles from the last year. It holds them for a year before it publishes them. There's an agreement that they have with the publishers of these scholarly journals. So you won't find current articles on JSTOR. This is just for back issues. And I will do a search for you using JSTOR so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, a wonderful, comprehensive, and very large database that you will undoubtedly use, not just for your literature searches, but for across disciplines, is the Academic Search Complete. This is a comprehensive, scholarly, multidisciplinary, full-text database with almost 10,000 full text periodicals, including more than 7,300 peer reviewed journals. 
the database features PDF content going back as far as 1887, and with the majority of full, full text titles in PDF format. Searchable, side, uh, searchable cited references are provided uh, for more than 1400 journals. So this is also an excellent source uh, to begin most of your research that you're gonna be doing at Santa Monica College uh, because it covers so many different disciplines, but it's also highly useful for literature searches. And I will be doing a search for you today in Academic Search Complete. Then there's current biography. This has more than 15,000 full text biographies and more, almost 10,000 obituaries from all the volumes of current biography yearbook from 1940 to the present. The biographies are searchable by name, profession, title, place of origin, gender, race, ethnicity, titles of works, dates of birth, dates of death, and keywords. Keep in mind if you want to see a comprehensive biography of an artist or somebody famous or a celebrity, uh, obituaries are terrific sources because they obviously cover the whole life of the artist. So I'm going to be doing uh, some sample searches for you to show you how it's done. And I'm going to be doing two searches for you today. One I'm calling a contemporary uh, search and one a historical search. The historical search that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for information on Jane Austen's novel, Pride and Prejudice, that was published in 1813. Obviously, if the novel was published in 1813, you know that Jane Austen is not a contemporary writer. She, uh, she is a historical uh, uh, writer, and um, that's why I'm calling it a historical search. I'm also going to do a contemporary search of the nonfiction book published by Isabel Wilkinson in 2010 called The Warmth of Other Suns. So my goal here is to show you different ways to do searches for different types of literature. We're going to be looking at a novel. We're going to be looking at a non nonfiction work. We're going to be looking at something that is contemporary. And we're going to be looking at something that is historical. So I'm going to start with Pride and Prejudice, and I'm going to be looking at three of the databases that I've already described, that I've already briefly described to you. I'm going to be looking at literary sources. That's my go-to source right away because it's such a, a, a comprehensive um, database. I'm also going to look at McGill on literature. And then I'll do a search in JSTOR as well. So those are the. And then for the warmth of other suns, which is a contemporary work of nonfiction, I'm going to go back to literary sources because it really is a great uh, uh, source for both historical and for contemporary. Uh, I'm going to go to Academic Search Complete so you can see how that database works. And then I'm going to show you US News Stream, which is a, a really terrific uh, database of all the national newspapers, uh, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, this, is, this is really a great source and it's very current. And as you know, for many works of fiction and nonfiction, these major newspapers do write, write reviews. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a very important source if you're looking for those materials for relatively contemporary works. So I'm going to stop the share of the PowerPoint and I'm going to share with you uh, our website. I'm going to stop share here 
and I'm going to share the database. Okay, so wh where am I now? I am at the Santa Monica College website. And I'm, I, this is very basic. Many of you probably already know this, but I just want to show you when you go to smc.edu and you come to this website, I want to quickly show you how to find the library. Now, I believe the library should be up here, one of these tabs, because the library is so important. It serves all the students and it serves all the faculty and it's a major portal. But, uh, you know, when they redid the website, they didn't ask my advice. So instead, it's hidden a little bit and you have to know where to look. So you're going to go to student support and you're going to scroll down to academic support and you can find the library between counseling and tutoring and there's the library and you're going to click on that link. And here you are at the library's uh, homepage, the library's website. And there are a couple of things that I'd like to show you about the website that will be very helpful to you. First of all, you see this pop-up comes up right away. And it says, do you need help? A librarian is online ready to help. And you have the option to chat now or say no thanks. Now, this is a new feature uh, or it's become a more prominent feature since COVID because you can't go into the library and ask you know, go up to the reference desk and ask, ask us for help. So uh, since we're doing everything online now, this is how you virtually go up to the reference desk and ask a librarian for help. Uh, so uh, we're not going to do that because I am the librarian. But you see, the, the uh, tab stays there. So at any time during your search, you have the option to go back, to ask us, to go over here, ask a librarian, or prominently right here, ask a librarian. These are all chat functions. And during uh, normal business hours, a Santa Monica College reference librarian is ready to chat with you. We are literally waiting to answer your chats. So don't be shy. If you need help, uh, if you have a question about anything, just ask us. We're, we are there to help you. Now, if you have a reference question at 3 o'clock in the morning, you can still use the chat function. You can still click on uh, Ask a Librarian, and a librarian will help you, but they won't be a Santa Monica College reference librarian. They will be a librarian from one of our uh, um, partnership institution. So this means you can get help whenever you need it, which is really a great resource for you. Okay, I, I want to show you some options on the left hand side that I think uh, will be very helpful to you as well. Uh, over here under doing research. This is a great place to find information that you need for doing your papers or, or doing your research. Um, uh, for your classes at Santa Monica College. Now the library online catalog uh, is only is now because of, uh, during COVID it's bringing up e-materials only because it, you can't go into the library and use our normal catalog and go to the stacks and find your books and take them off the shelf. Obviously you can't do that. So the only books that we can provide for you at this point are ebooks. And I will do a quick ebook search for you later on just so you can see how it's done. Uh, and this is the same for the OneSearch. I'm not going to spend any time talking about OneSearch except to tell you that'll only bring up e materials as well. Uh, library databases, these are all the databases that are available to you for articles that you need. And you can click here, or you can click here. It's the same thing. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with research topics, but research topics will take you to a, a database called Yale, 
uh, and it is a terrific place to go if uh, you don't, you're not sure what you're, what you want to write about, and you're looking for a research topic. Uh, this is a, it, it lists a huge list of uh, searchable fields of, of topics for your research. And so we, we often advise students who aren't sure what they're going to be writing about across disciplines for whatever class, of, class they have to start with research topics. But I don't have time today to really get into that source with you, but it, just remember for all disciplines, it's a great place to start your search. Then we have uh, introduction to research, which gives basic information on doing research. It's also a, a very, got a lot of helpful information. I don't have time uh, to go into any depth there. But this is important for me to point out to you, and that is citation styles guidelines. And when you click on that, it brings up information on how to do MLA formatting. Um, it also has the APA formatting style guide and Turabian. And uh, many times students uh, are told by their instructors that they have to use the MLA format or the APA format and it, students may not be clear on what that really means or how to, how to do it exactly. So this is a resource for students that will help you with that. And then over here we have workshops. This is really a great benefit for students as well and this is a listing of all the videos that have been put together to uh, help students navigate and learn how to use resources. Uh, so here's a workshop on plagiarism, which you can, you can watch any of these anytime you want. Uh, there's a really great uh, uh, workshop on research methods, how to find articles from databases. Here's a presentation on fake news, which is really, really great, uh, very helpful. Then we have we have one on websites and research. This is a terrific workshop on communications research, and here's an older presentation on literature research, uh, and it might be helpful for you after after you've uh, heard this presentation to go back and. Listen to this one as well, and they fill in gaps that are uh, or may emphasize uh, different aspects. And uh, the presentation today is going to be on the website as well. And then how to do MLA and how to do uh, APA. So these are really great resources for you. Uh, to be aware of, and I wanted to point those out to you. I'm going to go back to uh, the library's homepage. I want to point out one other thing, actually two other things. The first one is research guides. And these are uh, study guides that will help you. And you can see that there are subject categories here. And there is one for English and literature. And if you click on that, you've got a lot of very helpful information here. We have information on ac uh, academic integrity and plagiarism, choosing a topic, writing a research paper, articles, books, MLA, uh, the Oxford uh, English Dictionary, uh, videos and tutorials, that'll help you, web resources, et cetera. And also you see that there is a chat with the librarian. So uh, here are some uh, videos you can watch. So this is, this is a great resource that I wanted you to be aware of as well. I'm gonna go back. And one more thing to show you is that 
the library has its own YouTube channel and we post um, helpful videos and workshops there as well. So you have the opportunity to learn on your own time by going to the YouTube uh, channel or looking at the workshops. Uh, and here also we have workshops and videos. So this is just helpful information that you should know about on the website. But now I'd like to get into uh, the nitty gritty, the how to, to do your literature research using a library. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the databases. When I click on library databases, what you see here is one, a listing of all of our databases, and you can, these are in alphabetical order. And as you can see, we have a lot of databases that are available to you to use uh, remotely. And they cover a wide range of subjects. There's nursing, there's education, there's health, um, art, film, uh, there's dictionaries, encyclopedias, communications. So these are all the databases. We also have ebooks, and I will briefly show you about ebooks as we get into the search. But right now, I'm going to go to the literature area. And here are all the databases where you will be able to do research on literature. Now, obviously, I don't have time to go over every one of them, so I'm just going to go over a few as I explained earlier. So I'm looking for information on Pride and Prejudice. Let's say I, I had to read Pride and Prejudice for one of my classes and I need to write uh, an essay. So I'm going to start with Literary Sources. It's one of my favorite databases. Let me log on. And we're at Gale Literature Resource Center. And I'm going to enter in Pride and Prejudice. You can see I've done the search before because it popped right up. Pride and Prejudice, the novel. There's also Pride and Prejudice, the movie. And actually, there have been a couple movies. But I'm interested in the novel, so I'm going to click on that. And what you see here along the top, the results of just entering Pride and Prejudice into the search box is this tells me that there are uh, 263 articles on literature criticism of Pride and Prejudice. There are 67 biographies of Jane Austen, the author. There are topics and work overviews, 29 articles. Reviews and news, 190. Primary sources and literary works, 32. And there's also multimedia. Now you can filter your results over here on the right hand side. I'm not going to do that. But I, I'm interested in seeing an overview. So I'm going to go to topics and work overviews. I've read the book, but I want to make sure that I understand uh, about the, the, the context of the book. The, the time period in which Jane Austen was writing. I want to make sure I know all the characters and go over the, the plots. So I, what you see here in the first listing is the title of the article, the editor, the uh, volume where this appeared, this 19th century uh, literature criticism. It tells you the date it was written, the length of the of the article, and then it describes what it is. It's a, uh, this is a work overview and a critical essay. And I look down and I see uh, that um, some are, some are just work overview and some are criticisms. 
And I'm really just interested in the work overview. So I see this article, uh, an overview of Pride and Prejudice, the authors from Literature and Its Times, profiles of 300 notable literary works, et cetera, et cetera. It was published in 1997. It's almost 4,000 words, and it's a work overview. So I think to myself, OK, I'm interested in seeing that. I'm going to click on that. And this is what comes up. A brief description about this work, the title, Pride and Prejudice, published 1813, is the genre, it's a novel, the author is Jane Austen, and she's a British novelist. And then it gives me uh, events in history at the time the novel was written. There was a French Revolution that, that was going on at the time, although you might not have picked that up in reading the book because it's so specific to the time and place that Jane Austen was writing about, which was a small segment of society. Um, and so it describes that. It talks about English England's landed gentry and social ladder, which is really what this book is about. It talks about the difference between uh, London and the country. This Pride and Prejudice takes place in the country, which is society is a little bit different in the country than it is in London. So it, it describes that context for you. Uh, it gives a description of women's education and, con and conduct because there were very strict social mores in, during that time. And you really had to, uh, women were constrained in many ways. Manners were very important. And so this, this describes that for you. Gives a little bit about Mary Wollstonecraft, who was a contemporary. And then it gives you a very comprehensive plot, goes over the plot. As you can see, it's pretty dense. Uh, it, uh, just in case you miss anything when you're reading the novel, uh, it all gets explained to you here in the plot. And it talks about the romantic period, which was the literary period that Jane Austen was writing in. It talks about uh, sources and how the novel was, was received at the time that it was published. And it gives you further readings about the author. Now, here you see it has a source citation for this particular article. And this is the MLA version, but you could also look at the APA or the Chicago 17th, et cetera. But most instructors at Santa Monica College uh, prefer the MLA. So you can select this and cut and paste and put this in your, your citation list. But, big but, the disclaimer is that this uh, citation in this database, you know, like in all the databases, is generated by a computer. And oftentimes there are errors in these citations. They use caps where they shouldn't use caps, sometimes with extra spaces, sometimes the punctuation is incorrect. So it's very important that when you cut and paste that you go over the citation to make sure that it's exactly right because you don't wanna lose points on your research paper because you didn't take the time to just check to make sure that it's perfectly correct. Okay, I wanna show you some other features that are very important for you to know about. Here again, we have the site uh, option. You have the send option. You can send it to your Google Drive or you can email it and you just put your email address, et cetera, et cetera, and send and it shows you full text if that's what you want. You have the option to uh, print. Uh, and then one last thing I want to point out to you, and you have all these options again right here, Google Drive, mailing, printing, etc. cetera. Uh, you can, it, it gives you options, other options to explore. 
you can look at any, if you want to go further into any of these sub subjects of Pride and Prejudice, uh, it gives you options right here. So this is, this is really a terrific uh, source. This was just the information that I was looking for. So I'm going to go back to my results. And I just want to point out the multimedia option. So this is from, uh, this is a, a um, audio options. So we have um, from Fresh Air, uh, which is a great interview show on NPR. And the option that you have is you can, you can listen to it and you can also read uh, the full text right here. And, and, and again, you have the uh, citation format. So if you wanted to include multimedia in your uh, citation list, it's right there for you. It's really, it's a great source. Okay, so I'm gonna, I should just ask, are there any questions at this point about literary sources? Okay, because I'd like to show you a couple of other sources. And the next one I'm going to show you quickly is McGill on literature. And you see this is a different database. It's published by EBSCO. The other one was published by Gale. So it looks different, uh, but it's, uh, it works basically the same. And the thing about EBSCO is that EBSCO uh, uh, publishes databases on a whole range of topics, but you always know where you are because it's telling you right here, it's searching McGill Literature Plus. I'm going to enter Pride and Prejudice. It, I'm starting big with my searches. A, a good search strategy is to start big and to narrow down if you get too many results. And it comes back with uh, 23 articles. And uh, this tells you the type of article that it is. This is from a book. This is from a book. And if you get too many options, you can narrow your search. You can refine your search over here on the left-hand side. But 23 uh, is not too much. And I'm looking for uh, the master plots. And this is from master plots. I'm going to click on Pride and Prejudice. And what you see here is um, uh, a brief description. And then as you scroll down, you'll see here that it goes into greater detail. Uh, quick, quick reference here. Then it tells you the principal characters of the book. It talks about the form and content. Pride and Prejudice is a novel about marriage. There's an analysis of the work the context of when Jane Austen was writing, bibliography, so you can find other materials. And I want to point out to you something else, and that is that you can listen to this article as well. Okay, now, just like those, uh, the other database that we looked at, you have options here, you can send this article to Google Drive, you can print, you can email, and you can cite. And here, the citation format, you just scroll down until you find the MLA. This is the citation for, uh, for this article using the MLA, right? And again, uh, right here, they have a, a disclaimer. Please, 
please always consult your library resources for the exact formatting and punctuation guidelines because it's not always right. It's computer generated. And the last thing I want to show you is that you can get it in HTML full text. Which is what we just saw. Okay, so that is, that's EBSCO. And I'm moving right along here. And I want to do one more search to show you. And that is using JSTOR, which uh, remember is back issues of 300 scholarly journals. So we're going to go to JSTOR. And again, I'm going to start big. Pride and Prejudice. And I'm looking for, I'm going to look for reviews. And one thing that this database provides that the other ones don't, which is really great, is that you can focus in on what you're looking for by discipline. So let's say that I'm interested in uh, the perspective of Pride and Prejudice through gender, through the gender studies lens. So then I just choose gender studies and I'm gonna submit my search. And there are 15 results that come back of different uh, journal articles. Women in Fiction Revisited, Feminist Criticism of the English Novel. That sounds like something I might be interested in. I have the site function here. Here's the MLA. I can download, I can save. And when I click on it, uh, you see you have it's 17 pages long. You can read the article here. Okay. And you can uh, share it over email. So you can send it to yourself as well. Okay, so as, as you can see, uh, Uh, as you can see, this database looks different from the last two that I've shown you. This, uh, so now I've been able to show you three different databases, but that they work pretty much the same. Okay. So, are there any questions about doing searches for uh, Pride and Prejudice, because I'm going to move on now to a contemporary work of nonfiction called The Warmth of Other. Oh, I know. I wanted to show you about ebooks. Because uh, oftentimes, since this is a historical novel, there have been many books written about Jane Austen and lots of criticism uh, written about Pride and Prejudice and some of the other books. So here is ebooks. If I click on ebooks and I go to EBSCO ebook collection, uh, and you can see we're back at EBSCO and we are in the ebook collection, Pride and Prejudice, search. And here are seven articles that come up and wow look at this Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice a source book uh, that sounds like something I would really want to see it's from uh, a series by Routledge a guide to literature you can do the pdf full text here's 
here's the cover of the book, and then it shows you the uh, table of contents, the contents of the book. Uh, so, um, and you can um, email the pages you want, uh, print pages that you want. And again, here's the site function. And you scroll till you find MLA, and there you go. So that's how you find an ebook. But now I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to switch gears now and I'm going to do a search on a contemporary work of nonfiction. And it's called um, The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkinson. Uh, it was written in 2010. And I'm going to go back to my favorite database, Literary Sources. So I've got to speed up a little bit. And I'm going to put in The Warmth of Other Suns, The Epic Story of America's Great uh, Migration, Non-Work Fiction. And this tells me that there are 11 reviews and news. There's primary source and literary works. There's one multimedia. So uh, I'm going to scroll down through these. I see the date it was written, the length, book reviews, brief articles. See, I can tell by looking at the, at the uh, length of the articles that uh, some of these are quite short. That's not really what I want. And then voila, I get to uh, a review written by David Oshinsky that appeared in the New York Times book review. It's 1800 words, so that it's got some meat to it. And here is uh, the full text of the article that appeared in the New York Times. It's a review of the book very soon after it was published. And again, we have the MLA citation, uh, site function, send fun function, uh, print, et cetera, et cetera. So same database, but non-work, uh, non-fiction non work, you still find it here. Contemporary, you still find information on this database. It just, uh, there's a, uh, just a lot of information in that database. So that is um, uh, now I'm going to go. I'm going to. I've already shown you academic search. So now I'm going to show you uh, U.S. news stream because I'm running out of time. So this is a database that I haven't shown you yet. And this is where you find uh, reviews that are that have appeared in the major newspapers. So I'm going to put in the warmth of other suns. And there are almost 50,000 results that have come up. So that that isn't, that's too broad a search. Now I know that's too broad of a search. So over here on the left-hand side, I can uh, limit my search. I want to limit it to full text. There's still a lot, 36. I want to limit it uh, by source type. So I'm just going to pick, uh, I'm going to include newspapers and blogs and websites, just those two. That brings up fewer. I can limit it by date, but uh, I can limit it. it. The book was written in 2010. So if I just update it, there, it's just going to bring up articles that appeared after it was published. So that, that brought it down a little bit, but still too many. 
So now I want to look at publication title. I want to limit my, I'm trying to limit the search because that is just too many articles for me to go through. So I click on more and I can choose, uh, I want to see from the New York Times, from the Washington Post, and from the Chicago Tribune. Those are the three publications that I want to look at. So I'm going to apply those. And that brings it way down. Now there's 1800, but still that's an awful lot. Uh, and you can look at subject. Just the books, that's all I'm interested in. And that brings it down. And then if you want to look at the the uh, oldest first or the most recent first, you can limit it that way as well. So right away, I see an article in, that's from the New York Times and it tells you right here, newspaper, newspaper, newspaper. Uh, there should be some blogs here. Well, it's not showing it right now. You'd have to go through the list. I don't really have time to do that. So I'm going to show you what comes up uh, in this article. Here's the full text of the article uh, that appeared on the, East, uh, the late edition by Janet Masson in the New York Times, uh, the date, August 2010. And here's the full text of the article and it's a review of the book. Okay, now again, you have uh, options over here. You have the site options and you can choose MLA seventh edition. And here's the citation for the seventh edition of the MLA. Again, keep in mind, uh, always, uh, check your citations. You can email it, you can print it. Uh, other options is that you can um, send it to Google Drive over here, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so uh, that's all I have time to show you in terms of how to do the search and I apologize as we just have so much information available to you that it's hard to get it all in, in in a short amount of time. But my goal here was to show you two types of literature research uh, using showing you how to search for fiction, how to search for nonfiction, how to search for historical works, and how to search for contemporary books, sources. So I showed you sources that work for both. And as you could see, there was some overlap. Uh, so this is where critical thinking comes in because you will have to decide when you begin your search, do you wanna start with a, a subject specific resource like literary sources or McGill and then work to more generalized sources or do you want to start with a general source like uh, academic NOST files and then move to more specific general databases? These are decisions that you make as you're thinking about how to do your research. Uh, but I want to end my presentation where I began, which is on the library website. And I wanna point out to you, the most important feature for you is the Ask Us, Ask a Librarian, Ask a Librarian. You'll find that link on every page that you pull up. So if you get confused, if you, uh, 
if, if your searches are too big or too narrow and you're not able to find what you're looking for, you have the option to ask us. And we are uh, waiting to help you. That's our job. And um, I hope I've been able to be helpful to you in your literature research. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and see any questions. I don't see any questions. So the last thing I want to tell you is enjoy your research and reach out to us if you, uh, if and when you need our assistance, we're here to help you. Have fun. Good luck. Bye now.